Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael and I'm your host here on MTT Finance. Before we start today's video, I have a simple question to ask you. Have you ever gone through your house and found an item and as you're looking at that item, you think to yourself, what was I thinking when I bought this? If that describes you, well, don't fret because a lot of us have done the exact same thing. We buy things for what appears to be no apparent reason and then when we we buy things for no apparent reason and then we find them years later and think to ourselves, what was going through our head when we bought this? Why did we buy it? What made us think that it was a smart decision to purchase it? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be going over three big shopping mistakes that a lot of us make when we go out shopping or even when we shop online from our phones or from our computer or from a tablet or wherever we're accessing the internet from these days. Before we start things off though, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, as I would greatly appreciate it. And I love it when you comment, I get to read your comments and I don't have much to respond to yet. So if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment and I'll respond to you or just say hello. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing three big shopping mistakes that I think a lot of us make when we go shopping. And I'm also gonna be providing a little personal story these are mistakes that I've made throughout the years, and each one is gonna to correlate to one of the three big shopping mistakes. Jumping into mistake number one, and that is what we call impulse shopping. Now, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, this is when you go to the store and you see something on the shelf, or you're online browsing on Amazon or whatever you use to buy things nowadays, and you see something and your eyes are like, whoa. That's awesome. And you immediately, without even thinking about it, click that one click to buy button and it's off to the races. That thing is now being shipped to your house or you quickly throw it in your cart, you dash to the front of the store and you pay for it before you even knew what hit you. And let's be honest, especially if you're online shopping, Amazon has made this so easy to do. I mean, they save your credit card information on there. You can buy things with literally one click. And then before you know it, that item is now yours. You're the proud owner of a brand new Lara Croft Funko Pop. But it's often this trap that gets us into a lot of trouble. As when we impulse shop, we tend to not really think about the consequences later on, and it might lead us to buying things we really don't need. In fact, most of the time it does. Let me tell you a quick little funny story of how I made a mistake by impulse shopping. One day when I was at work, I stopped at a gas station to go to the bathroom. While I was on the, while I was in the bathroom, I was on my phone scrolling through Amazon just to see if there was any deals or anything I couldn't live without. And boy, oh boy, did I find something I could not live without. And it's this thing right here. This, my friends, is one of those things that you turn it on, it sucks the, the blackheads out of your face. I bought this and from the time I saw this to the time it was in my cart and purchase was probably less than 20 seconds. Just because I thought, wow, that's really cool. It's gonna give me healthy skin. It's gonna suck all the oils out of my face. And I bought this and I think I've maybe used this twice. I've owned it now for maybe two years and it's gotten about two uses and it cost about 40 bucks. So. This is an example of impulse shopping. And now here's $40. I can't invest this in the stock market. I can't use this to pay my bills. Here you go, water company. No, they're not gonna accept it. Now moving on to shopping mistake number two. And this one is what I call phase shopping. This is when you typically are going through a particular phase in your life, whether you dress a certain way or you're interested in a particular hobby and you buy things to go along with that phase but then you quickly get out of that phase and now what you've bought to fit that hobby or that lifestyle no longer is needed. To give you an example of when I made this mistake in my life, I think I was around just after I graduated high school. I think it was in my first year of college and for whatever reason I got into hunting. One of the things I needed to fulfill this lifestyle was a bow and arrow. And not just any old like cheap bow, I needed one that was like designated for hunting. And so I went down in the city I lived and there was actually a bow shop there. I did end up buying a bow that day. 
I think it came out to about $400 with everything included because you can't just buy a bow. You have to get arrows and the arrows have to be fitted to your bow. And then you have to buy, um, oh, I forgot what it's called now. Mine was called a quick shot, but basically wraps around your wrist so that it goes around the, the D loop. I remember that it's called the D loop and you'd pull it back and then you could pull the trigger and phew, there it goes. But to be honest with you, I can't remember the last time I've actually shot this bow. It's basically sat underneath my bed in its case for years now, and it never got to be used to go hunting with. That phase lasted for about six months, and then I moved on to something else. And so underneath my bed at my parents' house sits $400, in the shape of a bow and arrow that I cannot use to pay for any bills or to invest in the stock market. Moving on to shopping mistake number three, and I think this is one of the biggest ones for everybody, myself included, and this is what I call sale shopping. This is simply when you think you should buy something because you see it's on sale. Even though you might not need it right then and there, because it's on sale, you think, wow, gee, I might need this later, so let me buy it right now. It's best to really only use sale shopping if it's something that you actually are gonna use. So for instance, like with groceries, you might wanna stock up on meats if they are on sale versus doing necessity shopping where, oh, we're gonna have chicken tonight, let me go to the store, and oh, wow, it's really expensive. Yeah, with sale shopping, yes, you can you can shop when things are on sale, and that way, yes, you will save money in the long run. Hear me out on that one. However, grocery stores and online stores know how to bait us in with showing us that there's a sale going on. To give you an example of where I fall and pray to the sale shopping mentality, now this might be foreign to a lot of people watching this, I don't know, but if you can't tell by these little guys here, I play some video games. I play PC games. And if you play PC games, that most likely means that you play them on a platform called Steam. It's basically like an online store that sells digital video games to play on your computer. Now, one thing Steam is very good at is they like to offer sales throughout the year. They'll have a spring, summer, fall, winter sale, and then they'll basically always have something on sale. However, the other day I was going through my Steam library of all the different games I bought, and I was just bored. I couldn't find anything that I wanted to play. But I just kept scrolling through all these games that I had and I thought to myself, how much money have I actually spent on all these games in my library? And so I Googled it, how to find your purchase history on Steam. And sure enough, I found it. I found the big long list of all the games I bought. And so I sat down with my phone and I punched all the numbers in. And lo and behold, I found out that over the course of about four years of playing games on Steam, I spent $469.88 on all the different games I've had. Now, just to be clear, a lot of these games, yes, I have played. There's some that I've spent a lot of hours and had fun with my friends playing. However, I would say maybe about half of the games I've played for probably less than two hours. And they just have sat in the library and I've spent money on them and it's money I'm not getting back. It's money that's not going towards bills. It's the money that's not sitting in an investment account that's gaining compound interest and that's gonna be working for me to have a nice retirement someday. So anyway, enough about my mistakes and the shopping mistakes that people make. Here are four simple ways that you can combat being either an impulse shopper, a phase shopper, or someone who gives in to those sales. Tactic number one is simply to just sleep on the purchase. Basically, you see something you might wanna buy, but instead of buying it right then and there, you wait about 24 hours to decide if you should buy it. If that feeling of you needing to have that has gone away, well, that's a good thing. You'll be ended up saving yourself some money. The second strategy to use to combat buying yourself items that you're never gonna use again is to think to yourself how long it will take to make that money back. So for instance, if you wanna go out and buy shoes, let's say they cost $75, and you work at a job that pays you $15 an hour, in order to get your money back from purchasing those shoes, you're gonna to have to go work five more hours before you can regain what you've just purchased. The third way to combat making shopping mistakes is to think about your goals that you have right now or what you're saving for. So for instance, let's use one of my own bills. Let's say my car bill, which is generally around $200 per month. 
Let's say I want to buy something that cost $600. Maybe before pulling the trigger on that purchase, I should think to myself, hmm, this means I have to pay on my car for three extra months if I want to purchase this item. Or let's say that you're planning a vacation with your family. By buying something now, that may actually be cutting into a day or two of your vacation, which means that you'll have to stay at your vacation for a shorter amount of time than if you had never made that purchase in the beginning, and then you get to add an extra day or two to that vacation. And finally, tip number four to stop yourself from making silly impulse shopping mistakes, and that is to avoid saving your credit or debit card information into online stores for quick purchasing power for the next time around. You'll notice this if you ever do any online shopping, especially at Amazon or JCPenney's or Kohl's or any online or any online store, and that is that they will ask you after you've put in all your information, hey, do you wanna save this card's information for later? It'll make checkout a little bit quicker next time for you. And you think to yourself, well, gee, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do that. But the problem is, is that sometimes they make things a little bit too easy for you. And especially with Amazon's one click to purchase feature, that can get you in a lot of trouble especially if you have kids and they have access to your tablet or your phone. But anyway, these are just some simple tips that you can use to save yourself some money. Hopefully they will save yourself some money in the future and that you haven't made a bunch of these mistakes already like I have. I actually have more stories I could have told you, but I just wanted to stick with those three things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've watched all the way to the end, that you've enjoyed it, that you found value in it. If you have, Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment on something you thought was interesting or share one of your own stories about a purchase you made, whether it was an impulse buy, a phase shop, or a sales shop that you later regretted. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. My name is Michael, your host here at MTT Finance. I will see you in the next video. Take care.